I think we're welcome back. Uh, we're about to uh, enter into our final adventure of the evening, which I've entitled Smash. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, as always, we are going to meet our uh, wonderful players that we have. Uh, we have a fabled tier crew rolling in, so odds are you already know and love these heroes, uh, but we will give them introductions nonetheless. So first up, we have Sugar Mama. Welcome, Sugar Mama. Oh, hello, dear. How are you? Uh, I am very well. How are you? Um, oh, I'm, I'm very good. I've, I've, I've brought something new. Uh, I was starting to experiment in the kitchen a little, you know, following Crixus's example, but, you know, throwing in my own candy mountain flair, of course. Of course, of course. And I have it. <laughs> Mama's five layer fun dip. Ooh, uh, what are the five layers, if you don't mind me asking? Or is that, is that, uh, is it something I have to try to experience? Well, I've got a bit of a sweet layer on top. My, my boys tend to just skim the top, but for the candy, candy experience, I also have sour, some, some a bit of a bit of spicy, some bitter at Ooh. the bottom, and a mystery Ooh. flavor. The mystery is pain. I don't know if that's true. I don't think that Sugar Mama, the sweet, would make anything quite like that. That had where the mystery was pain. No, no, dearie. Would Would uh, you like to try some sometime? I would absolutely love to try some sometime. And you're so you're so just so sweet, Sugar Mama. Always baking goods for everyone in Bartholomew's shop uh, and giving out these uh, giving out these delicious treats for free. So thank you both for the both for the snacks and for helping keep the world safe. Oh, well, Mama does what she's got to do, you know. Yes, I suppose so. Um, in that case, that brings us to our next adventure. Uh, we have Sword Co. here once more. Welcome, Sword. Welcome. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, so, Sword, tell me, what's, uh, what's new with you? Uh, I know uh, the last time you adventured, um, you were out on a pretty, uh, on a pretty dangerous mission to battle some math goblins, if I'm not mistaken. How are you? Uh, how are you now? Uh, I'm all right. I actually haven't left the cave all that much since then. Uh, no kidding. I... I'm sorry. Oh, I said no kidding. Just I was saying, please go on. How come? Uh, I, I actually stuck around to examine some of the amber the uh, construct was encased in, to see if it has some magical properties. Uh, it Have looked like ordinary uh, amber. No, it just seemed like ordinary amber that you'd find uh, out of any uh, hardened tree sap. But um, we did, uh, I did talk to some of the uh, archaeologists that we were working with, and uh, surprisingly, the, the head math goblin had been working with them, uh, studying the ruins and the uh, finding ways to perhaps uh, use his uh, magic to. Uh, Perhaps transfer the giant co construct out of the cave. Really, uh, one of the head math goblins has uh, been working with the trigonomes. That is a uh, that is a bit scandalous. Uh, I look forward. It to, is, uh, but it, I think the interest of the ruins has just overridden any uh, kind of uh, what's the word? Uh, any animosity between the two uh, between the two? Yes. Factors. Yes. Um, Yes, I suppose we'll have to wait and see, uh, but that uh, that could be perhaps the first signs of progress in this uh, long-standing war between the two groups. At least until it becomes territorial, who owns what again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you always... Uh, it'd be hard to imagine it not breaking down, but we can pray uh, and be thankful for the small pieces that we have. Uh, well, either way, welcome tonight, Sword. It is good to have you back out on the front lines once more. In that case, that's going to bring us on to one Chogal of the Soothing Voice. Chogal, how are you? Oh, hey guys, it's been a while. Uh, it has been a while, Chogal. Your voice, as always, uh, has instantly put me at ease upon hearing it. I am very glad. I mean, it's, it's been a while because I've been selling my books, and it's been, it's been a lot of labor, you know? 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, have you been uh, have you been doing any more writing? Do you have any uh, Do you have any new kind of works that are in progress or going to be coming to the uh, coming to the shelves soon? Oh yes, absolutely. But I've been really focusing on selling my first three books. Uh, if you know uh, how to have a soothing voice, uh, yes, how not yes. to die whenever I want you dead, and mm -hmm. the tale of tongues. Um, uh, and I've actually got this great three book set that I've worked on. Oh really? Um, well, is yes. it kind of like a special edition of the three that you already have, or is it? Oh like yes, three it even books? includes author's notes. Oh no, no kidding! Um, some of the uh, some behind the scenes, of some of your inspirations and things like that. Oh yes, and if um, you act now, you can even get this magical turntable that comes with it. You can plug it in, well, with magic energy, and it will read the read the books for you in my yeah, voice, of course. Of course, and, and I mean, who better? I, I mean, I imagine some of the lessons on how to have a soothing voice translate even better when you hear them in your soothing voice. Oh, so much. Um, well, Chogall, uh, thank you for enriching the world with your literature, uh, and it is good to have you once back more uh, adventuring out, on the, uh, out in the field. It's good to be back. Uh, indeed. Uh, and last but not least, uh, also coming off of a, a, an adventure from last week, although one that was a bit more uh, a bit more trying, it would seem, we have uh, Nigel Estrada. Indeed, it is good to be back this week, Pete. How are you feeling, Nigel? I am feeling well enough. Interested to see something a bit more. Appropriate, as opposed to wedding scandals. Um, yes, uh, perhaps to help you clear your head a little bit, uh, it seems like Bartholomew has sent you in a, a completely different uh, direction. Not a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of kind of good old-fashioned adventuring fun, it would seem. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, I guess there was actually a lot of adventurers that were kind of clamoring to uh, get the invite to this particular mission. Uh, I can only imagine. Uh, I was going to say, but, but Nigel, um, Tell me, what else is new with you? How are you? Uh, how are you feeling, other than you know, um, your recent kind of difficulties out in the uh, out in the fields? Well, yeah, it turns out that the uh, contract with Bartholomew is quite useful, out of adventure in as well. I discovered this rather remote relic shop, and found a rather interesting uh, elixir. I believed it may have some significance to my interests. Unfortunately, it appears that some form of hex or curse was placed upon it. Touching it, it exploded. I found myself in Bartholomew's shop. I have not heard any word of the shop or the block it was on. I imagine it was quite the powerful relic if it left such devastation. Uh, it must have been, um, but perhaps now that you've learned that uh, this sort of pseudo-immortality that you've been granted by Bartholomew's shop has so much reach, uh, I'm sure there's ways Nigel will be using that to his advantage. Oh, I assure you I will, beat. Um, and perhaps it will come in handy in the more traditional way today as the four of you travel to Sokotoa. Um, you, of course, uh, Sword, were probably already in the region, which is why you were just called a bit of a ways away. Um, and Bartholomew has sent there to meet with a gnome by the way, by the name of Roscoe, uh, who apparently works at an event that is known as Smash. Um, some of you may already be kind of fans of Smash. I don't know uh, if kind of robot fighting is in any of your wheelhouses, uh, but it's gotten a pretty big name, at least in Sokotoa and even the surrounding kingdoms. People kind of travel uh, from all around to come to the arena and just watch the creations of these trigonomes just smash into each other and, and battle. Um, is, uh, is that something that you would say is in any of your kind of wheelhouses uh, or is this just completely foreign to all of you? <laughs> Little man fighting is funny. Well, it's a little new for me as well, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm used to climb through a combat, does that count? I believe oh. I heard a tale of an underhero attempting to get in, though he was banned. What was the gnome's name? Luwaga G? 
<laughs> um, that uh, that may be the case, as it were. Um, but uh, either way, uh, as you arrive, you can see that um, there is just a huge kind of just general uh, general stream of gnomes walking the streets of Sokotoa uh, towards the Smash Arena. Um, as they only kind of run it once a week, and as the trigonomes are responsible for most of the technological wonders of the world, there's a lot of stress in helming all of the scientific progress that is meant to kind of propel the world into the new age. Uh, and this appears to be kind of their release. Um, as you walk into the arena where you're supposed to meet with this individual by the name of Roscoe, uh, apparently he's a mechanic and pilot of one of the major mech teams that's going to be competing today. Um, you look around and you can see gnomes just kind of jumping around, um, carrying, you, you see one kind of run past you, carrying what looks like a big kind of rocket under his arm, uh, running over to a big pile of scrap in the side of the room. Um, you can see gnomes, just the, the banging of hammers, the, uh, the turning of wrenches. Um, and you're just kind of now uh, moving around in this space. Uh, and you can see also, um, the arena itself. Uh, it seems to be just kind of a, a fairly simple sand pit, but within you can see creations, large and small, just slamming into each other. One of them kind of shoots some sort of strange arcane beam at another one, uh, and it just kind of crumbles uh, apart. Another one, just uh, a huge kind of blade appears out of its arm extending and cuts another one in half. Um, oh my, how lovely. Uh, oh, it is love. very... Mama can really get behind some of this. Uh, it's very loud, uh, it's very violent, uh, and everyone seems to be uh, loving it. There's also a, a very carnival atmosphere about the place. Uh, and as you're kind of, you know, walking about, getting your bearings on the space, uh, you hear a voice kind of call out to you. Oh, hey there! Hey! You there! Who are you? Looking like you ain't from the Sokoto, you ain't gnomes! Get over here! Get up! Get over here! Oh, well, of course. Um, Sugar Mama pottles over. All right, yes. Um, you see before you a gnome. Um, he's wearing kind of goggles, but one of the goggle, the sides of the goggles is a lot bigger, making one of his eyes look disproportionately massive. Uh, he kind of smiles at you through a beard. You see he's missing uh, several teeth. Uh, he doesn't have eyebrows, and, and the beard's kind of singed in different places. Uh, and he has like three or four strands of hair. The rest of it looks like it's kind of been burned away. Uh, and, he, and he kind of smiles at you through these missing teeth. And he just goes, Y'all must be Bartholomew's crew! <laughs> that's right, that's us. Yeah, I hire. Well, the fact that you're wearing them badges! And he points at the kind of Bartholomew assigned badges used to identify Bartholomew's adventuring crews. Uh, it's pretty obvious, honestly. I can just kind of tell by the way you walk, and by the way you ain't gnomes, and by the way you're kind of looking around like you're looking for someone who asked you to come here for money. Well, I do have to support my my family, you know. Um, I certainly understand. I don't have a family, but if I did, I'd like to think I'd support them too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so tell me, what is it that you wish for us to do, dearie? Oh, would you like some fun dip? And he kind of thinks about it for a minute. You know what, I'm gonna take that on hold, but I may take you up on that before we're done. Maybe maybe once we're inside of our respective... All right, so I, let me get to the crux of what it is that I'm gonna need y'all to do. Uh, and he's uh, just kind of running around, turning uh, turning kind of bolts on what looks like um, several sort of... Um, several, several sort of mechanical uh, just exosuits that he looks like he's kind of putting together. Uh, and it looks like he has five of them. Um, he goes, so I got a whole crew around here. We're called the uh, we're called the Red Wreckers, uh, and we're pretty well known around these parts for being pretty much the toughest mech crew that there is in the entirety of Smash. We've Yo, held on. that title for some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We held that title for quite some time until, well, uh, a bunch of no goods done. Decide to sabotage our bots. How rude. 
I, I'd be inclined to agree. Uh, so that's no problem. We the best there is. We're going to rebuild the mechs uh, and we did all that. And we, we got them pretty much back together. Um, we had to lose. We had to, we had to forfeit one week. And those, uh, well, those rascals got their whole mech back all together. And, and they, well, they take the top spot. Because you see the way Smash works, the final round, uh, it's sort of a battle royale. And whoever wins the battle royale gets to go against the champ. We was the champ. We had to step out a week. So now they's the champ. Um, and this week, they knew we was going to come back and just tear them up one good one again. What they do, they put they, well, they put food poisoning poison in our darn food. Oh, that's terrible. I agree. Are there stomachs and then your food? Monsters. That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, no, they're not dead. Right now, they're in a position of honor and glory, and it is my aim to remove them from said position. I'm going to need the four of you to help me put together. I I'm trying to salvage what we got left from all of our scrap from last week. Put together these mechs. And then we're going to roll them out there. You see, the thing that we're famous for, and this is where it really gets my beard. It really, it really gets my goat, gets my dander right up. You see, the thing we're famous for is our mechs. We build them so that they can all combine into one big mech. That's... You're supposed to go, whoa, that's pretty crazy, right? That's like impressive. Mouth, mouth just drops, the dog just drops. It's, I love yeah, this. That's amazing. How? I how? agree. A fantastic tactic. So that's what I'm saying. Well, they stole the big part that we used to do that, and now they have one mega big mech. And we just got a bunch of little ones. So I'm working on a new one. Uh, in the meantime, I need you to get these ones uh, up to code. I don't know, just put some weapons on them or something. Uh, and you all should have uh, in your inventory something that is called, uh, something that is now called Mech Frame. Uh, it's under a, a folder that should be called Game 3, and you should now have something called Mech Frame. He goes, so I'm going to be working on that. I need you to go over to the Scrap Keeper over there. Uh, here, he gives each of you... Um, he gives each of you two tokens, and he goes, I got these scrap tokens, had them for a while, cash them in now, get something good, I'll slap them on the mechs, that'll take me like two minutes, most of my time's gonna be on fixing the Boltron device. Okay. Um, so we kind of, um, so, I don't know, go get whatever you want your mech to do, go over, tell that guy, he'll give you something that'll make it do the thing you want, probably, he might not got it, I don't know nothing about everything, but, it, you know, that's what I need you to do right now, we got like, we got like a half an hour until we're on. Okay. Imagine that. Um, and anyway, he goes, so, you think you can handle it? Absolutely. Indeed. All right, get on it then. Uh, and he kind of points over um, towards the um, the person that he refer referred to before as the uh, the scrap keeper. Uh, and it looks to be just this big kind of robotic device. Uh, and various gnomes are kind of running up, and you see them like placing tokens uh, into his uh, into he has like just basically a coin slot on his on his belly somewhere. Uh, and then his big kind of long extending arms are just reaching out into this huge just pile of scrap. Uh, it looks like maybe this is, uh, before they send things to the dump, uh, this is kind of where they get anything useful out of the uh, the pile first. Um, but there's various gnomes kind of going up. Uh, you see one kind of uh, running away with uh, what looks like just a bunch of, like, saw blades. Uh, and, um, yeah, you, you uh, are now before this thing. Uh, and the way this will work is you simply ask what you... Uh, just tell me what you want on your particular mech, uh, and we will see if we can make that happen. Uh, you guys have, you know, you guys have a little bit of time to think and discuss. Um, you got about a half an hour uh, of prep time here. So, what do you guys want to do? Uh, this robot kind of, you know, he greets you. Just hello, how may I serve you? Oh, 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 oh I like this. <laughs> Uh, Joe Gall is gonna look at his sword, at his glaive and his shield, and be like, Got something like these? Um, he thinks for a moment. Um, you want the traditional sword and board combination. That will cost you one scrap token. How many scrap tokens do we each have? Two. Two, okay. Perfect! Um, and you, uh, kind of 
you drop the coin into the uh, you drop the coin into the slot, uh, and the arms uh, kind of extend backwards and start kind of reaching and, and shuffling around in the scrap pile for a bit. Uh, it takes some uh, it takes some time, but he's just now kind of looking around, um, and eventually he pulls. Uh, it looks like a just this really huge just kind of blade. It doesn't exactly have a handle on it, uh, but you assume Roscoe can see to uh, getting it fixed on. Uh, and then just a big shield. It's it's actually just like a circle. Um, but as he kind of places it in front of you, you just see this like kind of circle of energy appear around it, uh, forming what looks like a magical energy shield around that like center core. Oh, <laughs> very nice. I'm nerding out. I'm oh, too going nerding out right now. <laughs> um, 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 I got something else I, I totally want. Uh, uh. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you got like spikes I can put on the armor. Um, mm, it thinks for a time. Spikes for armor. That should be mm, accomplishable. Uh, and the mech just starts kind of um, reaching out into the back, and it's just really, literally just taking out sharp pieces of metal. Um, it doesn't look like this is, it's not moving as efficiently as it did before, uh, and it just, as you put in the scrap token, hands you back, just <laughs> it clatters to the ground. Just this huge pile. Some of them look like they were actually just made to be spikes, um, but other ones just, um, other ones just seem like, you know, regular sized, like short swords and rapiers that Presumably, are gonna have to get like welded onto the frame, so it'll look a little bit hodgepodgey. Uh, but they will accomplish the thing that you want it to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, Chogal, you uh, use your two tokens up right away, and you got yourself uh, a big old pile of good old-fashioned weapons. Um, who else? Chogal would love the arena stuff. He come, comes from the arena, so this is his thing. Oh yeah, um, and you uh, kind of carry it back over. Uh, and Roscoe just very quickly starts, goes about uh, with incredible efficiency. All right, one here, one here, one here. Uh, and he's just like welding around and uh, it's very quickly coming to coming to life the way that you want it to. Um, so who else has something they would like? Well, do you have one of those big doom laser thingies? Uh, it thinks for a moment. Mm, big doom laser processing processing we have one pulse cannon cannon whoops one pulse cannon are you looking for mounted or main oh what's the difference dearie mounted pulse cannons are placed upon shoulder pads main pulse cannons are worked into arm components uh, let's let's do a main one. All right, that will cost one scrap token. Uh, you place the token in, um, and um, it kind of reaches back into the pile and it pulls from within. Um, it looks like this very very large. Um, it, it's just sort of this very large. It looks actually just kind of like a, a more shippy kind of cannon, uh, but there's lots of like wires and stuff that are coming out of it in different places, uh, and it's kind of glowing this dull green. Oh, lovely. And I don't suppose you'd have like a magnet thing that can move metal things around? Mm, electromagnets are difficult to obtain. Uh, oh. And it seems to think for a while, uh, and it goes, We probably can find a simple one. All right. Oh, what? And it kind of uh, reaches back into the pile, uh, and it pulls out. It seems like it's on sort of a swivel, the part that ends up, um, the, the part that ends up being kind of given to you. Uh, and... It, it's mounted on this sort of base so it can rotate, but it looks like a regular magnet. Um, so b both of your parts look more like... Uh, it looks almost like a refrigerator magnet that's been put on, like, a, a, a pivot kind of uh, spoke. Oh, alrighty. Uh, it's very big. 
Um, so you have a, uh, a pulse cannon and an electromagnet. Uh, very good. Um, who else would like to grab some scrap from the pile? Quickly, to clear. Go ahead. Uh, are we building up for one very big mech, or are we getting are stuff you, for you, individual you're, mechs? You're each getting stuff for your own personal mechs. Okay, just wanted to make that sure of that. I'll let Sword go ahead with the buy-in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Sword, you step up. Do you have a flame Um... Flamethrowers, those are easily obtained. We have 76. What is your preferred type? Preferably one with a wide, uh, a wide flame that can be focused. Um, mm, wide flame and focused flame, we could provide either, but not both in one. In that case, I'll just take the white flame. Very well. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> whoop, whoop. Uh, you kind of uh, it reaches into the um, it, it reaches into the back kind of pile, uh, and it pulls out. You see, it actually like shuffles through what looks like just a huge section of like flamethrowers, various things with gas tanks. Uh, this one, um, the flamethrower, it. Uh, the flamethrower itself kind of, it, it seems to like move on a little bit of a swivel, so it gets this sort of uh, arcing pattern as it throws the flames out. Um, so, uh, you have a flamethrower, you have one token left. Alright, uh, <clears throat> and do you have any uh, grappling uh, claws or hooks on a long cord? Um, like a real... Um, your robot knelt on me appropriately enough, uh, but uh, the robot kind of reaches out back in the pile. Grappling cables easily obtained, uh, and it reaches back and it just drops kind of a grappling cable onto the uh, onto this into the space. Excellent. Thank you. No problem at all. Uh, which leaves us to Nigel. I believe to start, I should at least arm my device. I will follow suit with the sword and board approach. Um, all right. It, it supplies another one of those, uh, supplies another sword and board. Do you um, have any energy nodes that might be able to further enhance more magical damages? Radiant, um, for example. It thinks for a while, um, and we do not accommodate for divine casting. Uh, that uh, actually seems to be a little bit outside the range of, of this scrap pile's capabilities. Very well. Uh, arcane. If you had something a little bit more arcane in mind, they could probably cover you. Would you be able to add something to my weapon so that once it makes a strike, it can release a burst of arcane energy into its attacky? Um, thanks for a moment. You require a... Thanks. Thanks. Processing. We can perhaps accommodate. Um, and it kind of... Uh, it kind of pulls out um, what appears to be a, um, it kind of a, pulls out what appears to be like a heavy battery pack with a few kind of little little zappers on the end of it. Uh, and it takes it and picks up your sword and uh, kind of puts it on the outside of the sword such that it's now, um, you see the outside of the sword all of a sudden kind of zzz, as it's kind of now crackling with electricity. Excellent. Um, very good. Uh, and I think that is everything for everyone. Um, uh, 
uh, you kind of bring your miscellaneous parts back over to uh, Roscoe, who kind of busily goes about um, kind of assembling, putting them all together. Um, by the way, did you all see the uh, see the mech frame thing within your uh, respective character sheets? That is correct. And then. Okay. Um, um, or I'm sorry, not on your character sheets. Uh, it should be over in your journal above your regular character sheet. There should be a thing that says Game 3. Uh, and then when you scroll down into it, you should okay, now have it. the mech friend. Um, very good. Um, you have your uh, grappling hook uh, sword that can be used to one grapple you to a point uh, within 30 feet or that can be used um, to attempt to grapple an enemy um, and pull yourself towards that foe um, are we sharing the sheet like collectively uh, yeah you guys are using one sheet but I'm putting all of your individual stuff um, on the sheet uh, on the same sh sheet um, very good um, so as you now, um, one more thing. All right. Um, so your mechs are equipped. Uh, tell me, like, he, he also offers to kind of like style your mechs and stuff for you. What do you, um, what do you kind of choose to take on for your respective, uh, for your respective robots? Uh, what, what, uh, what look do you want? Mine basically looks like it looks like Chogal. All <laughs> oh, the all over his body. Yeah, it's like it's like Chogal wearing a thorn mail. Exactly. With with a big giant laser shield. All right, radical. Uh, uh, what about uh, Sugar Mama? What's your uh, what's your mech look like? Oh well, I've had it decked out in only the hardest of candies, and <laughs> it's got a bit of that peppermint striping that I love um mm -hmm. and you know a couple can cotton candy swirls here and there to make it extra pink and um, nice. yeah a couple of uh, a couple of Roscoe's uh, crew members are there kind of uh, spraying up they seem to be like pretty unwell certainly not well enough to pilot uh, but good enough to help you guys like paint your mechs and get the aesthetics you want uh what about uh what about Nigel? Nigel's is big and black with some tattered bits of black robing on the back with a disturbingly white bit painted on the face, the classic scythe look to the weapon, and he's currently trying to argue with one of the gnomes to make the shield instead of the like pale blue circle to be sort of a black light skull for the shield. I'm just telling you, it can't be done. I, I can't just change the nature of the arcane you know, on this plasma shield. Uh, it simply projects it. Just make it project something different. Um, I mean, I can, like, paint over it, but then it won't have the cool glow. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, you're arguing with this gnome. Uh, Sword, what about you? I um, have mine painted white, and I have two banner, a banner hanging off the back of each shoulder, kind of in a, uh, a sort of like a cape effect. Uh, by the way, the flamethrower is not on the sheet. Yep, I'm doing it as we speak. I just gotta add these all things all manually because I didn't know what you were gonna go with. <laughs> um, that is going to be that. All right, cool. Um, Did you want so, to get the magnet? Uh, um, oh, the electromagnet is going to work uh, a little bit like the, um, it's, it's going to be like the grappling hick, except you can pull something uh, towards you. Ah, cool. Um, so, in that case, um, you all kind of move into your, uh, you all kind of move into your mechs and, and you get strapped in by Roscoe and he speaks to you. All right, so now the thing you're going to want to do and know about commanding these mechs is it's incredibly easy. Anyone can do it. You see, the reason for that is I got them built in so that they have these neural detectors. And so the things that you think the mech's going to do, however, 
um, that is generally aided by vocal commands. So if you tell the mech to do something, for example, and he goes, Roscoe Punch, uh, the mech all of a sudden just kind of does this cool fist extend uh, where it does a, uh, a flurry of punches in like a one, two, three combo. And he goes, it helps if you have kind of names for your moves. So that way, uh, when you use your mech, it'll it'll be able to kind of fire those signals faster via the neural transmitter. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> well, something like a candy crush, perhaps? Uh, <laughs> uh, and as you say candy crush, uh, the mech uh, takes the two hands, uh, one of them the pulse cannon, kind of retracts in so it's two regular hands again, and it does like a big crushing motion. Oh, my. Let me try. Turn off flash! Uh, and the sword... <laughs> Uh, does like kind of a, a spinning slash move. Oh, creeping. Uh, oh man. Um, you see the mech kind of jumps up and does a flip and then does a single like two handed downward swing with the scythe. Excellent. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Do our natural moves or like those things that we were trained to do also work with the mechs? Uh, no, but you can just hop out of the mech and use those if you want. You see, the way, uh, and this is important, the way Smash works is you lose when the when the driver concedes. That's why I decided to go for tough guys instead of pilots and mechanics. Good choice. I mean, we. We'll just come back if we die, so really, there's nothing to lose for us. I don't, so please protect me. Also, I'm not done with the Boltron device yet, so uh, maybe if you um, kind of like make sure I don't die, that would be helpful in the first round. Oh, I should have it up by the, by the big battle. Okay. That's what this is for. Togar Shield! Uh, it, it pops up. Uh, Pete, real quick. What? Yes. Which one of these things is the the the, the electromagnet thing? Um, electromagnet is not on there, uh, but you can use it on a target to pull them towards you. Or push them. Um. Magnets do have two polarities. Yeah, I'll say. Well, the thing is, is it's, it's a question of um because it, it's more metal based. Um, so it's not like you're opposing another magnet. You're like contracting. I'll say that you can either use it to pull something towards you or push yourself away from something. Well, that's fair. Um, does that make sense? No, that doesn't make sense. To either pull something towards you or pull to or pull you towards something. Okay. Um, so, in that case, um, you kind of all suit up and you find that the motion, the walking is very easy to do. Uh, and you kind of roll up into this big uh, sand pit arena. Um, and you can see on kind of either uh, sort of either side of, of where you are, um, there's like six sort of chambers, six six spaces um, that allow kind of mechs to enter. And, and all of these mechs are all sort of walking in uh, at roughly the same time. Um, and you're kind of overwhelmed the first thing by just the, uh, the roar of the crowd as these mechs are starting to walk out. Uh, Roscoe's there just kind of like schmoozing and waving up a bit in his mech. Uh, his looks pretty um, his looks pretty straightforward. It's got a lot of more like intricate looking tech it seems on the inside of it, uh, but it doesn't have a lot of like weapons and stuff. Um, and you can see, you know, various groups kind of moving in from the side. Most of them have kind of a themed color. You guys look uh, a little bit oddball with all of your unique kind of styles to them. Oh, I'm sorry, Sorta. I don't think I ever heard what your particular style was. Uh, Sorta. Uh, I'm having style? a hard time trying to think of a name, but uh, I guess uh, Blaze. Ah, so you have, like, you know, fire decals and stuff like that on the side of it? Yeah, kind of like a divine flame. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, but they're more like sort of radiant flames that are uh, emanating off the side of your mech, painted on. Uh, you got those right. kind of they kind of curved up some of the metal edges to uh, to look like sort of looking flames. Um, yeah, radical. Uh, and you kind of move in, uh, and you see um, sort of a gnome slowly sort of descending down on what looks like a platform just connected to a chain uh, from the ceiling of what is like a pretty big dome that you're inside of at the moment. Um, Kimball and, uh, is actually working up the crowd because it used to in life. Uh, go ahead and make me a um, go ahead and make me a performance check. Um, 14. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're into it. They're looking at the, the mech. They see that you're a pilot of a mech, and you look like the mech you're piloting, which people are super into. Uh, and a lot of people, um, they seem to now be voting for you. Um, uh, and also, there's some murmurs like, oh, that's 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 the famous author. Yeah, that's the famous author. Uh, and um, they're looking forward to see you uh, not being killed when people are trying to kill you. Or what is the exact <laughs> title again? Sugar Mama's just going to wave pa very passively at the crowd, smiling. Yeah, indeed. Like um, the princess wave. Uh, and uh, as you do so, um, this person that's kind of was descending down by chain, um, you hear him start kind of calling out, uh, Welcome all to Smash! And there's another huge kind of big, The Super Mech Arena Slam Hour! Uh, and all of them are all just sort of, uh, they, they go wild again. A lot of the mechs kind of slam their arms together in this loud kind of smashing metal noise. Um, we got for you today six competitors, and the winners are going to take on the baddest of all the mechs, the master of disaster, the interrupter of eruptors. Uh, and he just kind of goes, the one and only Negatron. Um, <clears throat> But for now, we got to see who is the mechiest of mechs in today's battle. So without further ado, it's time to... Uh, and you hear the crowd call out all in unison, just smash! Uh, and he goes, you know it! Uh, and his kind of thing gets kind of pulled up uh, and you just hear a deep sort of trumpet sound uh, kind of blare out and uh, all of the various robots start kind of running into the arena. Uh, I'd like y'all to uh, roll for initiative. Ugh. Four teams. Um, oh my. Uh, all right. Um, so it would appear that the um, the first. Uh, you can use your own initiative, uh, not the mech frames. Initiative. Oh, well, in that case, let me re-roll. Yeah, both of you guys can go again. Uh, I, I might keep that one because that was a uh, natural yeah, that's, 19. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's much better. Uh, and the enemy mech frames are gonna... All right. It would seem that um, kind of the two teams that are... Uh, you watch as three of the teams start kind of like engaging on the opposite side of the arena, but the two on either side of you um, both seem to be kind of moving in your direction right now. Um, you see uh, one of them, the gnomes are um, the gnomes that are piling the mechs and their mechs. They all seem to be themed like kind of uh, elderly people. Uh, and the other one, um, the mechs on this side, they all look like they're um, they're very like elementally sort of themed. Uh, there's like one for each element. Uh, and then one just sort of like pink one. It doesn't seem to be associated with a particular element. Uh, and they're just kind of like running at you. They're, they're moving towards you in the arena. Uh, in this case, the first one to act is going to be Nigel. Uh, two squads of five mechs roll at you from either side. Uh, Nigel is going to uh, prep up to attack the first person that comes near old gnome guy because he's all about that future Voltron. Um, you're going to get yourself into kind of a defensive stance and uh, you pull your uh, uh, your mech scythe in front of you. Um, Holding that attack action. Indeed. Uh, in that case, uh, what about you, Chogal? What do you wish to do? <laughs> oh, uh, how, how far away are they? Um, right now, um, they're running towards you. They're only about 30 feet. You could run either direction to either group. Great. I'm going to the arcade guy. Okay. Like 
shield up, but I'm charging out uh, at them with my sword to the side. Jogo Slash! <laughs> uh, go ahead and uh, make me two attack rolls. Uh, you get to use the sword instead of the fists for your uh, attack rolls. 17 and a 16. 17 and a 16. Uh, unfortunately, both of those uh, both of those attacks just barely miss. Uh, as you zoom, uh, swing the sword, the mech kind of uh, throws up a uh, throws up an arm to sort of block, uh, and ding, ding, uh, you hear the two kind of um, the two kind of bolts uh, ricochet off of it. Um, anything else on your turn? Um, you can basically, uh, if you want to do something as your character, um, you can do that. So you can take a turn either with the mech or your character. Uh, at any given time. Okay. Um, am I able to cast like anything on my uh my next sword? Um, if it can target, if it can target an inanimate object, then yeah. And I'm going to actually cast Shield of Faith as a bonus action on the mech. Um, the sh can Shield of Faith target a non-creature, or does it is say anything, uh, a shimmering field, uh, or creature of your choice within range? Um, okay, yeah, it has to target a creature. Uh, the mech is actually not considered a creature. Uh, oh, it wow. is just, uh, a suit. Like, so you could do, like, a, a green flame blade and treat it like a weapon or something like that, um, but the Shield of Faith, uh, is unable to wrap around it. In that case, how about some Thundering Smite? That you can do. Um, so you have a thundering smite ready for the next time that you attack. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, and you watch as the blade kind of coats now with thunder. Um, in that case, that's going to bring us next to uh, those foes. There are five foes currently kind of surrounding you, um, and their mechs look significantly um, th their mechs look significantly kind of smaller than yours, um, but they all kind of shoot at you uh, with sort of miscellaneous uh, miscellaneous elemental. Uh, elemental blasts. Uh, one of them kind of <laughs> shoots a um, shoots a bout of fire at you. Another one kind of uh, an electric shock, um, and there's kind of a, a blast of wind. One of them just it seems to like just reach into the ground and pick up a bunch of rock and just uh, throw it in your face. Uh, the pink one uh, just kind of runs around and is moving over towards the main group, uh, but it's going to make um, several uh, several attacks against you. Uh, with these uh, miscellaneous mechs. Um, misses. Still misses. That one hit. Uh, they're hitting, they're shooting at your mech, by the way, not you. Yeah, oh, that's right. Uh, actually, the, the, two do mi the two do hit, the 23 and the 24. Oh man, they rolled really well. And that also uh, hits. Yeah, so that's actually quite a bit. Um, that's 15, uh, 17. Uh, points of that's 32 points of damage uh, as they all just kind of 32. Uh, yeah it's all the damage is all miscellaneously typed uh, but it's 32 points of damage as they all kind of surround you and, and, and kind of beat down on you at once uh, and they're all calling out things like super flame tornado uh, and other ones like air wind slicer um, and that's gonna do it for the foot turn no, the 23, the 24, and the 26 all hit, so that's 26 points of damage. Oh, wait, did I do the math wrong? Uh, the, the 20, oh, the 20 didn't hit? No. Okay. Uh, wait, actually, wait. Uh, yes, it does. Never mind. They all hit. Okay. Um, yeah, so 32. Um, yeah, you, take a, you take a hearty chunk of damage uh, as these things are all kind of ganging up on you now. Um, yeah, damn, those are some rough rolls. That's going to bring us, in that case, to... Um, the next in the initiative order, which was, uh, my apologies, that was going to be Sugar Mama. Oh, all right. Well, it seems like the boys are having some trouble. So, I'm going to try to help as much as the mama can. Um, there's a couple guys by Chogol, right? Um, yeah. Oh, she can make two pulse cannon attacks, right? Um, you can do, um, one pulse cannon and one, uh, fist per turn. Okay. 
uh, she's gonna say, uh, Sugar Frost to Doom! <laughs> She'll do the, uh, the other thing. I don't know why that's an advantage. Um, yet yeah, should not have been at an advantage. Um, a 17 just misses. Oh, you guys are so close. Um, as the uh, the pulse cannon uh, flies just a little bit uh, a little bit to the side, um, and also uh, I forgot to mention your um, your ready to action. By the way, uh, was supposed to be triggered when that uh, pink mech kind of ran up into your midst. Uh, by the way, aha. Uh-huh. You watch as the camera just zooms in on Nashil's face as he kind of flips up. Ha <laughs> you've activated my trap move. Thanos, hour of reaping! Doing classic <laughs> Super Saiyan arm motions as he will do hour of reaping. All right. Um, if you want to put the, uh, the shock on that, that has a recharge on it. Um, so you can just add that on. But, oh man, another bad roll. The, uh, the 16 uh, misses. Yes! And I will put some shock on the second hit. Um, no need uh, as the sword kind of uh, falls down and then uh, kind of swings around to the side, kind of spinning uh, agilely as it just cuts clean through the mech in one hit. Uh, and the mech, the scrap kind of, uh, uh, the scrap kind of flies, and um, you see the uh, the pilot within go, "Whoa!" Uh, and they hit some button and they just kind of eject out of their mech, uh, and you just hear them, "I get up!" Uh, and uh, a big kind of extendo arm just pulls them out of the arena. Uh, but you have absolutely destroyed that mech. Um, so, Sugar Mama, um, you still have... Um, uh, is there anything else that you want to do on your turn? Do you want to move, or...? Well, I'll, I'll stay by the, the Rasko. Okay. I'll do him a protection. All right. Um, yeah, you continue to, uh, you continue to protect Roscoe, um, who's there. You see, he's just still, like, just kind of sitting in his mech. He's not really even looking at any of the controls, uh, which are more there to just kind of, you know, more there just to help you visualize than anything else. Uh, but he's just focused on tinkering with something inside of his mech. Um, in that case, Sword, what do you wish to do? I wish to cast... I'm not do again spirits guardians um all right where are you casting your spirit guardians near chogo of course um of course i'm will, gonna run up oh, there wait, they can just they can just ignore allies spirit yeah, guardians yes. is around you though you can't cast it out. yeah well i'm oh, going okay. to run so, up so near chogo oh. so they will hit other enemies all right cool um so all of those mechs kind of um, around Chogol, uh, the spirit guardians start appearing outside of the mech, uh, and they're like kind of doof, doof, beating at the armor. Uh, it seems that they have some resistances such that the spirit guardians can't just like penetrate in 